Everybody, we'll officially call the meeting to order and thank you all for being here. Madam Clerk, do we have anybody signed up for public comment? No, sir. All righty, we're on item number three, budget workshop. Um, Madam Clerk. I think governing body budget is first. Um, it's one page. I've listed, we went back and listed everything that the major items that come out of each line item. So we could go through it or you could ask me questions. It's completely up to you guys. Much pleasure to board. So this is just expenditures? Correct. And it's 0410, 0410? Correct. Okay. Um, I, I just had a couple questions. And I guess they, they bridge across. This communications. Is showing up on like a, a, several of these, you know, and they all say the cloud, the online. So that's a, a split between these different accounts, and that's just based on what? Or how's it split? The number of users. Okay. So if they, the cloud costs go up, then that'll ripple across the different accounts. Okay. Because that was a big bunch. A big jump from last year to this year. The cloud? Yeah. Or communications he's talking about. Yeah, it went from, well, for this thousand account, 1,000 to 7,000, 7, so. Almost 8. Yeah, almost 8. So this is that 1, 2, 3, fourth line down. The cloud did not go up, so. Communications. I know we did. Um, I'll have to go back and look at that because I think that was. From a Gatsby 87 entry, but so you had to put stuff in year, there. Or? Well, it's an end of year credit to that account, so it takes away. So you're saying the thousand is not realistic? Well, that's no. actual last year, so that's got to be real. Well, no, he's saying no, that. We we do oh. an end of year entry um, for Gatsby 87 that, and 96 that does the uh, subscription based asset. So it would have credited that, and so it makes it artif look artificially low mm -hmm. for actual yeah, last year. Uh, and there was no increase in the cloud from last year to this year, so that's a better thing than that. Okay. Have you guys got more questions? Um, what is AB? AB travel, AB? Appointed board. It, yes, appointed board. board. That's us. So, <laughs> no. yes no. and no. It, it's the other boards, but this is, those line items have been that way for a while. Um, yes, we take some of the governing board out of the appointed board, but technically the appointed board is like P and Z and Board of Adjustment, those kind of boards. Yeah, so the next one after that, operational contingencies, that's the other one that went up way up from last year, 4000 to 23000 It says bank service fees, and you haven't spent 21000 of it. Can you talk to that for a minute? Did you want to explain what was being taken out of there, Daniel? That's a, sorry, Daniel um, and Margaret also share this one. So the, the bank service fee did go up, um, not the full. I mean, not 23,000, I'd have to go back and look at what was budgeted last year. But the, the service fees are just margin fee and service fee for the monthly. Yeah, I mean, I see the 4,000 year that was spent last year, and then all of a sudden it was, you know, 23,000 for the budget. And it looks like you're only going to spend the 4,000 that you did last year. It, that's all that they're taking out of it, but it also goes for things like if computers were to go down. It, it's basically what it is, so, operational. So it, it's, it's nothing a where to break. It's a maintenance and repair fund is what it's, it is. It's, but it's for contingencies. It Correct. doesn't mean you're going to spend it. It's just a... Right, like so you don't have to come and ask for money if you need to go replace something in a... Yeah, for an example, yeah, I got you. Um, yesterday we had a leaking ceiling in the sound system. I wasn't sure we were going to have a... <laughs> A meeting today because it was leaking from the ceiling. So it, it's stuff like that. Well, you have a whole maintenance thing on the building. What, is that so, but that, it, but it's governing body. So more that would be more like stuff. If my stuff breaks or stuff in the boardroom breaks, there is a town hall ops maintenance one. But that's more for like air conditioners and um, plumbing that kind of stuff. 
And isn't that more for planned maintenance versus unanticipated? Yeah. Is that correct? Yes, yes and no. Like, we actually plan for a couple of air conditioners to go out every year in the town hall line item because it happens every single year. So, but, yes, planned, and there is a little bit of surprises in there. They've got a cushion in that, I'm sure. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Right, because they don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. In the town hall ops maintenance budget, I see generators listed. Do you have generator work coming this year? It's to maintain it also. Okay, so that's just for like the service. startup and service, service and contract. cleaning out the diesel fuel and all that. Yeah. Correct. Well, okay. baby checks. We have a maintenance agreement on it. Okay. Can you um, talk to the contributions one? Yes. I think that basically that one changes every year. This past year, we took out the Booster Club and Brunswick County Search and Rescue, I believe. Is that correct? Brunswick County Search and Rescue. So how does that get what do, you, wait, what do you mean you took it out? I mean, that's who we gave donations to. So is that set in advance? Or what's, is there a process? How do we... How do we determine who we give to who we don't give to they're supposed to apply every year okay and we've got a target we try to hit or uh, it's it's totally at the discretion of the board okay it's the same one we're kind of tracking well tracking more towards last year's actual than this year's budget yeah. unless you're expecting people to come and ask it's actually a deadline I think we're past the deadline of we're not past it yet I have a basic budget mechanics question. Just so we've got this line here, and we we have a certain amount of money budgeted. If we don't spend it all, does it automatically go back to the fund balance? balance? Okay, so it doesn't have to be appropriated back. It normally just gets swept back in. Okay. Now, now for the next year, if you have a program that wasn't executed, the logic is that you would roll it over and reappropriate right i understand yeah. that but it has to go back and then yeah. you have to take it back that's out right every year yeah. okay every year every year we, we end it's basically one year money yeah and then the transfer to the b part fund that was for a specific project i assume that you haven't spent the last one uh those are those are year in closing entries so why is it so much more this year than last year Oh, it didn't last year? I didn't. <laughs> I didn't bring my files back in, so I can't say yes or no about it last year, but it included that for this year. That's why the, there's a big jump there. Okay. So that was essentially for Central Reach, Christy? Is that, or at least part of it? Yes. But you haven't paid it yet because it's still sitting there. Okay, you don't pay it. Remember, you don't pay it from this line. Got it. Okay, okay. remember, it transfers to another fund. Right, that's yeah, yeah, an expenditure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I, I don't know. I guess I'm still confused a little bit about that because, I mean, Central Reach has been going on for 10 years. I'm not 10 years, but a long time. So sometimes we transfer, sometimes we don't, or... Right. Um, and it, it's based on fund balances we want to maintain in the accounts, or what's? What? What? I don't understand your question. Well, I mean, yeah, we we're basically if, I think transferring another five hundred thousand dollars this year than we did last year. Every year, it has changed the composition of the mix that goes to what actually goes into paying the debt service. And I assume, David, this essentially depends on what all we have stuffed in to be part to buy that year. Right. So would we see a line item in the other fund that says, it says I think we did already, right? It said central yeah. reach. Yeah. So it would somehow match up to part of this number? Yes. Yeah. This number is not, 
this number is not as high as the number that was the debt service for Central Reach. That was 1.2 million. This is part of that. The transfer is to cover part of that payment. The, the exact match will be the revenue line and be part of that says transfer from general fund. You know, that exact amount. Okay. So the logic there, and correct me if I'm wrong, is when we took on Central Reach, we raised taxes dramatically. Those taxes come into general fund, get transferred to B part. B part writes the check to the certain, pays the debt. Is that? I wouldn't characterize it like that. Okay. But could you repeat that? Well, I mean, I, I remember when we undertook Central Reach, we voted to have a almost a doubled taxes. We increased taxes ad valorem dramatically. The thought was that that increase would go to pay the Central Reach debt. So that increase would come into general fund and then we write the check out of B part so we transfer over and write the check or is there some or does I, it just I, all get I, in the mix? I, I I think it all gets in the mix, Tom. I I don't remember the board raising the taxes whenever the Central Reach project was bought, but I may Oh well, I remember. <laughs> it was big. It almost doubled. It yeah. almost doubled. I I evidently you've looked me in the oh. books and I haven't. <laughs> You no, I, I remember when it went down, yeah. you know, will people go for that or not, and everybody went for it. But I, I guess that's a different, to or bigger, you know, what gets paid out of which account for things like that. If it's transferring over to pay the check out of B part versus writing the check out of general fund, I'm still trying to understand it. Well, I, I'll, I'll go again, and then if one of the two of them want to pile on, I, I think the, the thing here is that, so yes, there is a revenue line in B part that you looked at Friday that, like Daniel says, matches this number because it says transfer from general fund. But the entire amount of the debt service for Central Reach is the 1.2 plus the amount that I gave you Friday that is the interest payment that's in debt interest. So general fund can support other funds. And it's a transfer that was made, a decision of the board at the time to how much they would put towards a B part. That was a board decision during budget workshops, just like you guys will be faced with a board decision on how much you would like to transfer from the general fund, if any, this year. The number varies from year to year. Right. It depends on what <clears throat> they approved last year to get done so you went to the fund balance the fund balances and pulled money as necessary to make that budget work basically i don't have anything else on this page no i'm good okay rick you got anything down there no sir i think it looks just fine Can I jump in on the software real quick? Uh, we've got a, uh, under contracted uh, services, we have a software support thing. And my question was, is that just the general IT or does that include software support for the new tax software? Yeah, but I know Heather's got some other IT support and stuff. So, so I guess, let me see if I can be specific. On the tax software. The that, that was to purchase. You're correct. That was to purchase the actual suite of the software. And okay. And have to pay a fee to maintain it. And that's certain. down in the other line. Correct. Got right. it. And Thank you. And that's why that went from 19000 to 42000 because you're having a lot of support for the first year, obviously. Well, we had to buy it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. Right. And, you got, and you got to learn it. Yes. So I get the bugs. Well, the, is the 42 the Shake new normal ahead, now? That it'll be 42 going forward, or is this the blip because of the transition? No, the, the price, the tax software line will eventually just go away, and the support will be down in the other line. But we still have another section of the software to go for the Gov Hub. So depending on how soon we get that, what's left, we'll probably just try to carry over to pay the Gov Hub portion and the tax software. But the support that is yearly, every year for any software, right, well, stays in the other line. And then the tax software is just for the purchase of the new programs. So these are purchase software, not kind of lease, not subscription, not, not subscription these, or whatever. These these are subscriptions. They're, they're subscriptions, but it's what we have to pay to get everything converted, transferred, and the use of them. Okay. And then your support comes on top of that. Okay. So the tax software line is kind of consistent at forty three, forty thousand dollars, and that'll be the the license fees and ongoing costs. Not, not software. The tax no. software will not be ongoing. No. Okay. When, when, but they do have that final stage. So she's saying some of it might have to carry over because they haven't gone through all the stages of what they need to get the full suite. Okay. Which is why you have so much outstanding to spend. Okay. Right. Right. I have a question on printing. Again, this is just for my own education, um, so bear with me. I see we've got like 6000 bucks for printing, decals, letterheads, envelopes. Is that for like mail and water bills and stuff like that, or what are we printing? That's it? Where's Which line is it? 420-1200. Um, um, yes, they have, um, we have all the letterhead envelopes. We're sending out water bills, so you know that's monthly, so that's yeah, a lot. I was and then, of course, the uh, water bill um, is like a pre-printed part of it, and then the um, the basic format is pre-printed, so we have to have those printed. Um, okay. Yeah. I was just curious what we were publishing. Yeah. Um, so, sorry. I, I'm the same way. I'm just trying to figure out where things so. That's in admin instead of being in the water sewer, like an admin. I, I'm just trying to understand. It's partly both because uh, I use the envelopes also for tax bills. Um, envelopes are used for anything that we have to mail out. Okay. You know, they're pre, they have the letterhead, and then they've got our um, postage stamp okay. on the side. Um, but it, it just, I guess I'm just trying to understand for a water bill that is. So there's printing in water as well. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. There's an account. Yeah. I, I don't have that one in front of me, but there's the cost of putting the water bill out should be part of the enterprise fund for the water system, I would assume. Yeah, it, it yes. is. Okay, okay. I've got one last question on this page again. It's just. For my education, down at the third line from the bottom, insurance and bonds. Just explain to me what the bonds are. I just, I don't know. That's a line item, but the majority of that fund right now is actually just the property and liability insurance for all of the town. Oh, so there may not be a bond involved. Correct. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Right. All right. But, I mean, we, we have had uh, projects where we had to post a bond. Okay. You know, it's 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 not in here, in this line, but we've actually got a bond outstanding on the Turkey Trap Road project. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So if it was something related to admin here, that's where it'd be sitting. If we had a bond, like if we had a bond well, to build. This is, this is a really a consolidated um, insurance line. We pay the league of municipalities insurance bill from that, which is pretty much. An umbrella everything okay thanks I, yeah because I know that question has been raised a lot it covers the docks it covers the pier it covers it's our blanket policy blanket liability okay and it's enough 
Are you comfortable with? Well, the league sets the values okay. on what they insure. Matter of fact, they just came down here recently, and the uh, the, the it's kind of like they tell us what they'll cover. They did a big appraisal of all the town properties. Okay. Did that, and we fill out an application every year, and they come up. They basically take what we fill out and come up with the amount we pay each year. Okay. I, I mean. Everybody knows we're getting a lot of questions about the liability on the pier, so I just wanted to make sure that was in there. It is. Okay. I'm good. I think I'm through. Rick, you got anything on that page? No, it's just five. Then you're done with me and you're on to Tim. <laughs> you want to do the same thing, Tim? We'll just ask you questions. Sure. Okay. Um, on communications, um, what's in there? What, what's that, that involved? by the administrative staff, but our communications consist of our, our phones, our uh, hotspots, and our uh, field communications. So that's Radios or anything like that, yeah, maybe? That's okay. So the, we, we, we try to have the ability to do the job in the field and in the office, and, uh, you know, that requires those phones, it requires those hotspots, you know what I mean, so that we have real-time information. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um, under advertising, I'm just assuming that's it. When you're advertising uh, rezonings or whatever, that's putting it in the paper and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, some of the best examples I can give you is, is that, and that is a floating number because we don't know how much of that's going to happen, but one year we were short because we actually undertook the bulkhead uh, ordinance by its face value yeah. and went out and cited all of them and we ended up, some of them, the ordinance required us to make big notifications on posters because people were ignoring our, our, our letters. So the attorney at the time said we had to post notice on the property, so we did it with four by four posters. You know what I mean? So we had to have those made, and that's just an example. If you had a rezoning, I think Rick Green uh, entered, uh, came to the planning board one time to have a piece of property rezoned. We had to put out the posters and the notifications, so it's that kind of stuff. Okay. And, you know, we did some notifications for the parking committee years ago where we sent out stuff. So it's kind of what we're told to do, so we try to keep it up in there. I got you. We got. I, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to just run down the list maybe. Um, under contracted services, um, I just want to be clear, that that amount of money doesn't cover when you're – having our architect do the bathrooms or something like this this is pretty much what it says here the surveying um, well it does have plan designs and vendors does it include yeah, it, it well what I mean by that is is that there every once in a while there's a uh, uh, it dictates in our department if somebody sends us something say an engineer sends us something we're not real sure about it we may have to send it out to an engineer to have them, us give clarification so we can make sure that the public safe. So we may get re-clarification based on it is. A lot of that happens with the NFIP. Um, if, right. we, if we're in need of a document for the CRS or the NFIP, we, it may be a document that's required by an engineer, so we have to go out and, or a surveyor and, and contract to get that done. This would not cover, like, design services for a walkway, let's say, or would uh, it? Most of that comes out of... Out of okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but Tim's always in there in the trenches getting it done, I think. Yeah. The walkway by the pier looks great, by the way. Yeah, I'm hoping we're going to have handrails and... Uh, They're there. Make, I know, make preparation for the beach mats that come next. They're hoping to apply once we get the ones we got down. I say, well, I guess it is. But it's... We're hoping to apply for an extension so we can get them out farther. Okay, as great. As soon as we can see what we can do it to do. Um... The homeowners recovery fund. What um, I see that's as an expenditure. I thought that was money you guys 
took in for something. I have no idea what okay, it's for. What, uh, the state, the, it is required by statutory rule that we collect $10 for, for permits that fall under the proper category under that statute. Uh, most of it is, is large remodel jobs or remodel jobs that meet the criteria for license criteria, new homes, or any kind of other construction that has to do with residential. Uh, the, the statute requires us to collect $10, and then we ha we pay, the state gets nine, and that goes to the licensing <laughs> contractor board, sorry. and we keep one. So that's why that yeah. line looks like it does. At the end of the year, it flushes out. We keep okay. one dollar of everything. You can you can literally use what we pay out, you divide it by nine, and you'll know how much work we've done that falls into that category. I use that number, as a matter of fact. But, okay. yeah, that's, so that's a... That number's in there because we've got to put the money in there to send it back out. We're not, we're making a dollar. I, I was, yeah, I just, mm -hmm. a lot of work for a little bit of cash. Yeah. Um, on, um, uh, let me see what line this was. Going back up, travel and training. I'm assuming there's some of that money you send there for bringing your, getting your inspectors fully qualified for residential, commercial. It's, that is, there is so much education that has to be done over there and so much con ed that has mm -hmm. to be done over there that we try to, I kind of try to break it down, but you got to remember we have to constantly keep up all those certifications that's over there, including the stuff for the CRS, the NFIP, the floodplain manager, mm -hmm. because everything that we have there that is even remotely uh, connected to construction or construction, we get credit for in the in value of numbers that help keep that rating low. Gotcha. So if we document going to a class that, say, FEMA puts out, we get credit for it. So it, it, so it just it doesn't cover all those certifications. It covers all those other things that JANA does with CAMA and all that. So, so this is kind of an aside, but by the end of this fiscal year, um, Cherry and Tower are going to be about where, uh, I know one of them, I think, completed her requirements for residential inspection. Is that, have got, I got no, that she's right? Still, she's still working on our certifications yeah. for the electrical side. She has the level ones, which gives her certain size buildings and limitations. And when she gets the, the electrical, she'll be fully certified for that for that area. Will that happen before the end of the year, you think? Don't oh. know. There's okay. a, we, she was hoping to take electrical class, but it conflicts with a FEMA class that they need to take, which is important for our CRS. Yep, got so you. She has, a, she has three years to get those certifications. Uh, she's been hot-footing it so far. Good. But it looks like there's going to be a little conflict in there, but we're, we're hoping that she will have all those level ones by December of next year. That's kind of the goal. Um, because there's some other things they got to take okay. care of too. All right. Um, I think that's all I've got for you. Thank you. So, Tim, you, you've got a new system too, or one's coming. Is that we in have, here, or is that over? What's the cost of that, and where is it showing up? Um, Daniel, didn't we take it out of the? Didn't we take that out of the contract with services for the? Uh, the program's <coughs> up. The program's running. We've done all of the uh, education. We've taken all the courses that we need to get it running. But it's been functional since November. Okay. So it's running and it's it's, it's working. It's a portal system, um, and it's uh, it seems to be making everything a lot smoother over there and quicker. So, so that's just for inspections? That's just for inspections. Okay. Yeah. So I guess this is back to Daniel. Then where is it in here, or is it just <laughs> – or did we already pay for it the year before? Or? I think we paid for it out last year's Last budget. year's yeah. budget? Okay. Yeah. And it doesn't have any support in here? It's, it's, it's the, the, the contract had uh, three years um, on for, before we okay. had to renew it. Yeah. So you paid when you paid for the yeah, software? Yeah, we paid for it up front. And they, they give us continuous support. Okay. It's cloud-based, and it's, they give us, we, we still have their, it doesn't cost us to pick up the phone and call. Okay. And I think I heard that you were going to integrate it with the other systems for, I don't know if it was billing or what, but it we seemed do. like... They, they can now pay. Okay. They can pay online, and when they go to the portal, our, every contractor now gets a, 
when they get a permit, they have the opportunity to get a number, and they can use everything through the portal. They can schedule their inspections. They can pay without having to come back in to get their permit. As a matter of fact, uh, Carrie's got a stack today to go out and put up, I believe, so, or, or got something to go put up that I saw yesterday. So well, we are actually, instead of making them come get the permits, in some cases, if they don't want to, we go out and put them up for them. So it's kind of streamlined everything. Working well. But that, that's all been paid for. There's no incremental. There's no more, no more, no more charge. There is a service charge fee for them to pay online like they do. The oh, we'll get more revenue. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So I see that you got a new vehicle this year. Uh, we, that was that Last vehicle. Year. Well. I think that was this year, but yeah. yeah we got a new vehicle this year. this year. We have three vehicles. That's what I was going to ask. The two vehicles that we had before were the average age. I mean, the average age was like 16 years. They were 30 years on both of them with a mileage of over 200 and some between them. And so, um, uh, so we had vehicles. already replaced one before Rhonda left, and then we we recently got another one. So we've got three that are less than um, three years old. That how many employees use? We have three employees that use. Vehicle. And does anyone take them home? Yes, me and me and Jana. Carrie Carrie doesn't take one home because she she can't. She has a conflict with children, and you know the rules don't let her move children in a town vehicle. So I think I asked this previous meeting, and I apologize if I'm repeating myself, but when you retire the truck, that money that gets gets auctioned off, right, and that goes in somewhere else if it's not in this account for inspections? Or? Did you look at the uh, revenue sheet, that sale, of fixed, that sale of fixed assets line? It's on the second page of the revenue near the end. 5000 budget, okay. That's, that's where it goes. Okay. For, for building inspections, for, for any fun tan vehicles. Okay. So three same page. So I, I probably should have brought this up on the other ones too. I just did kind of some rough. Overall, last year's actual three. 35, this year's 525, I mean, that's like a 56% increase. Is that the vehicle or just everything going up or what's the driver? Just increase to, from the year before to this year? Yeah, I'm just comparing the 23 actual to the 24 budget. I mean, this probably was handled during the budgeting talks last year, but just curious. Well, we, got, we got the vehicle that we, we were anticipating possibly not being able to get like the permitting program you know what I mean? Um, and uh, we were expecting the influx of some of the issues we were going to have with the ADA stuff, maybe having to, you know what I mean, put some money in, into that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. if you're talking about the budget and money compared to the year before, what the use was used the year before. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just, you know. Well, you got the salaries too. We, got, we added a person. Okay. There was a person that was added at the top, and so and there was a salary increase the year before. And everything went up. No, I, I understand. Yeah. I'm just trying to get a feel for is this what we're going to look, that's like, what look at it's going a, forward it's year over salary, year? Or is the this salary some... increases in the department went up because when the thing was done, they, they were low. And, um, and and the other things I said, but that that was some of the main things. Um, yeah, I, I think if you look at it, you know, you got the contracted services because we were anticipating. It, for instance, we did we did do some stuff with like um, striping parking lots and that kind of stuff because Halstead wasn't part of it, and you'll get that report the other night for some ADA stuff because there was some stuff that was outside the Key Bridge stuff that we had already planned to do before that came down. And, and you'll get a report on that. Good. So that that work, and 
um, is done as part of inspections then, or what's the when does it go to public works? When is it inspection for paving parking lots and, or parking oh, spaces? Oh, we we just did it because we were in a did, what I just mentioned. One of yeah. the things I just mentioned, we were in a time restraint. We wanted to get it done, and we all we did was go out there and line the parking lot. We did it like at lunchtime, me and okay. staff. <laughs> so we okay. bought the paint. I guess you could say we killed some of the government red tape by taking the initiative. And we do that every once in a while. You'll probably get punished for that. <laughs> just <Nobody> saying. <laughs> yeah, no, no good because I'm punished. Yeah. <laughs> Got anything else? No, I mean, you know, I'm just looking at the bottom line now. You know, we're 42 percent spent. I think we're 60 percent, 58 percent through the year. So we're tracking, okay? Or oh yeah, we the, the, well, the real. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to agree to that. <laughs> I, I, I told okay. you all my my concerns about having an artificial uh, a calendar to to be the uh, the metric on where you are in your programs. I, I don't like it. I don't subscribe to it. When you say that you're your optimal uh, ratio, I don't know if it's on there now, your optimal ratio um, is you're, you're two-thirds of the way through the through the years. You should be two-thirds of the way through on everything, and that's just not the way it works. Well, true. I mean, things are going to pick up in the spring, and they slow down in the winter, right? That's what you're referring to, David? Unless I mean, you, uh, it's not linear, you it's know, it's linear. what you're saying. That's right. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I, I, I realize that as more building and stuff goes on, you'll be busier. Anything else on that one? I'm good. Rick? I looked at the numbers and they, uh, as you said, everything is increased in price. You do the math and add the vehicle in, it makes, makes perfect sense. Chief, I guess you're up. Lucky me, right? Mm -hmm. um, we can do the same thing. You can ask questions or I can run through it. I can put some notes out there to the side. Of, um, mm -hmm. complete, is your communication empty. totally separate or is it the same communications, IT stuff? And so we, so we, we have some things that are different, like with our CAD system, but the, the other IT stuff is like split with Heather and, and the admin sides. So you have a CAD system? Yes, which CAD is Computer Automated Dispatch, yes, CAD. Okay, <laughs> because that's being an engineer, I'm going, you got no. CAD and he doesn't? It just was like... Yeah. So Computer Automated Dispatch. Not that we are doing the you. dispatch, but we are tied in automatedly with our dispatch center. Um, so, so a lot of the communications comes out of that. Um, inside the vehicles, like Tim was talking about with field ops and mobile hotspots, we're basically running mobile offices inside the... You know, the officer can do everything in the field on a traffic stop, have communications with dispatch, run driver's license, tags, all, all that information. So, so it's all available in the field and it's to each vehicle. So that's, that's where a lot of that communications comes from for us. Okay. I just, the CAD threw me. I just right. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's computer automated dispatch. That is what ours is. All right. A lot uh, of acronyms. Yeah, yeah, and I've I've got a question under Community Watch that's along that way. Donation to BSNR. Okay, so just what's BSNR? So it's Brunswick Search and Rescue, and I've actually okay. learned a little bit today in in that. So I knew that they usually ask for a donation, and we usually try to pitch in and do 500 because they help us out tremendously. But it has apparently come to my attention that uh, they have not asked for that donation yet, and and I'm not sure how that solicitation process goes. To be 100% honest with you, but. But that's usually what that money is for. We we donate to Brunswick Search and Rescue. Okay. I've got one other question for you, and it's just uh, you've got an M and R for equipment. Yes, sir. And you list radios, mm -hmm. and then you have equipment, and you it list is. radios again. I know radios are pain in the butt because you have to update them, and they change how they operate. Right. Could you just 
discuss what the difference between those two lines are? So I will, and, and how it was intended and kind of go through that. Okay. So usually the equipment line is for purchasing equipment, and the M&R would be to obviously maintain and repair it. Um, we are in the process, the entire county is, in, in switching to Viper. And I, yeah. you may be familiar with some of that. Yeah, a little we bit. Have, we've been integrating and purchasing radios as we go through instead of trying to purchase all the radios at one time. And I actually just got an email last week, I think it was. Um, they finally given us a, a deadline date, which is June of 2025. So there's, you know, that's going to be our deadline date. No more kicking the can down the road. Anything after June 2025, if we're not on their system completely, our radios won't work. So that's kind of why I've been splitting it up is at this point I'm kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul out of both of those lines to make sure our radios are where they need to be. And I've, I've got a, um, an idea here. We have currently seven phase two ready radios. They are, they're ready to go. Um, they just need the flash upgrade. And then we have a total of three portables and three mobiles that we will need to purchase by June of 25. So part of what I've got in there where I'm like, hey, we're going to be at 100 plus percent, you know, obviously I'm not, I can't spend, oh, it's not in the budget, but I was just putting those numbers in there to, to get us there. We're going to have to flash seven radios, purchase three mobiles and three portables, and then we will be up to our 2025, you know, where we need, but we just need to be there by June of 2025. Does that, you got some spares in there? That, that includes a one, one spare uh, portable radio. So, is is yeah. you comfortable with that? We need at least one spare, yes. Yeah, well, we, of course. <laughs> yes. Um, and I just, is, are you comfortable with just one is my question. We uh, yeah, obviously don't need them. I think he's asking if we would need to. I, I don't know how to yeah. answer that question. I would tell you this, and, and it's liable to change tomorrow. The Motorola's that we have have been very good. They've been very okay. reliable, very dependable, and... I honestly think that one would get us through. Now, what does that mean? My luck, one's going to break, and then a week later, the second one's going to break, and we're going to be scratching our head. But in all honesty, I think with the track record of Motorola, my, my opinion is that, that one is sufficient. Is there, one spare. is there a big lead time on them? Say you, you lost one and they, now they're, that don't like Frank laughing yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, the, the lead time is actually it's ridiculous. So. That's what I was afraid of. Yes. Because yes. these things are not sitting on the shelf anywhere. They, they're not. Wow. Are you kidding me? Are you wow. serious? It took two and a half years to get the last three months. Do you anticipate that to continue like that? Or was that a COVID thing? Um, not you two and a half years. <laughs> they, they blamed it on COVID, and it was because of circuit board being made. Elsewhere. Yeah, elsewhere. Um, so, um. It still it was it was about four months pre COVID and I would say six months is probably where they're at now. So, so is, will the county help at all? I mean do they have spares that can loan you until So if we needed one, if we lost one, I'm sure I could get my hands on one temporarily from the county. Okay. Um, the, the radios, oddly enough, that we're replacing, five of the handhelds and five of the mobiles were given to the police department when we first went to phase one viper. Um, those radios are, are obsolete. They won't be any good. They're, they're of no value. Um, but we're obviously going to return those to Brunswick County. So we, we, as Chief said, we've taken the time over the last eight years Every time we replace the vehicle in each budget, we've gotten a radio or two anticipating this coming, and we've made it within six of the 22 to 24, 26, whatever total it is. So we got 80% we got of them, basically. Yeah, I just don't want you to get caught because we didn't anticipate a long lead time. Um, if you got some other work around, if you end up down to minus one, that's cool. But I just, you guys need to have your radios. I know. I, we definitely have to do some exercises and, and figuring on that. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then just for my 
component from the we're talking in the car radios and portables. Yes. So, so, so every car has a mobile is what's called a mobile radio, and then every officer, which I didn't wear mine in here yeah. today because I didn't want it going off. Every officer has a portable radio also. Okay. Um, we also have a, a base station in the office. So that's another radio. Um, so yes, it's ev everywhere. Just no matter where you go, you can talk. Hopefully. These things are pretty expensive too. It's not like Ridiculous. things they, I'm used to. Yes. Right. They're, they're like. Five, five grand to yeah, pop? About five grand a piece, which is crazy because my first, I mean, they don't, they talk. This this right there doesn't cost five grand, and it can do way more than what those radios can do, but that's just. It's, it it's not on it the is. emergency system. It's not on the emergency <laughs> system, that's right. That's right. We, should get, we should get three vehicles per. That, that's been the track record is, is, unless the technology changes, we're getting two vehicle installs per motor radio. So you, you, you buy it once, and then you don't have to buy it the second, the next time you replace that car. I got you. But the, the only exception has been we're trying to get phase two right now. There, there is nothing the FCC is pushing right now for a phase three. So I can get real technical, but I don't want everybody to get mad at Motorola holds up. Yeah. We had an officer leave one on a bumper a couple of years ago and drove down the causeway and a citizen returned the radio to us and it was about two thirds of its original thickness. I took it to the shop and they put a plastic case on it and handed it back to me. Wow. Zero damage other than so, yeah. I'm shopping for a cell phone, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so vehicles, how many total vehicles do you have? You bought one. That the eighty-eight thousand is one that was bought last year. Yes, we did. We did not replace any vehicles this year. Correct. Okay. So how many do you have? We have. I wish I'd have brought my dag on list with me. Eleven. Oh, <laughs> never, never mind. Right here. I'm good. Ten, the black one. That's right. Yes. So twelve vehicles. Twelve vehicles. Yes. So that would be the ten officers, the black one for the spare truck, and then or the, the black one, the unmarked for the detective vehicle that is not you. being utilized, and then the one spare. Is that right. And those are all taken home except for your spare. You have a spare. The, the, the only ones that are taken home are the ones that are actually issued to officers. And you so, have 10 officers. Well, we have 10 positions. We don't have actually yeah, 10 sure. officers. Correct. So, so the, those, those are unassigned vehicles. They're not being taken home. They're, they're sitting at our EFC building waiting. So, they, well, this is so for vehicle replacements, are is there, the whole town's looking at seven years, seventy thousand miles, maybe? Of course, what Tim said obviously defies that. Yeah, we typically okay. follow a seven year, seventy thousand mile, and we we have several fourteens on there that are obviously at ten year, and I think a few of those are actually well outside the seventy thousand. I think we've actually got one now that's over a hundred thousand. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they seem to go in waves here. We've got four of them in 2014, four of them in 2021. So it's, and unfortunately, it's where we don't buy, <clears throat> excuse me, where we don't get vehicles for two or three budget cycles. And then all of a sudden we're saying, hey, we've got four vehicles that are out and we're replacing four at a time instead of, you know, doing a program where you just every year you're replacing two vehicles. I'm not suggest. I'm just saying instead of, you know, every year you're replacing two vehicles or something like that. It's yeah, that was, that was kind of... They, they kind of get stacked on top of each other. Well, then it just perpetuates because then they don't have the 70,000 miles. They all come to the right at once. That's right. Yeah. yeah. When you don't get them replaced on the periodicity, do you like, do you experience any reliability issues or increased maintenance costs? Well, you're up at 200,000, so that's a difference. But 
to me, that's one thing to look at, uh, condition-based maintenance and replacement. So if, you know, it's in great shape, and of course it depends on how critical it is, what happens if it goes down, um, that's something you can look at to decide if you need to replace it. Obviously, you guys, you don't need a vehicle breaking down or not starting, and Chris's guys, much the same way. Um, that's why they got this care. Yeah. Right. Well, that gets down to that condition-based assessment, yeah. you know, as opposed to just a periodic thing. Because, you know, I, I, for me, I, you know, if a car breaks down, it's not a big deal. So, if, as long as it runs and it's reliable, I'm okay with it. But you guys have responsibilities. I don't. They once they start getting up to the extreme, like the the 14 Rams that we have, there's actually on that list should be four of those. One of them is the black unmarked, and there's three marked. Two of those are still operational trucks that, that we use. One of them, to be honest, is a parts truck. It is sitting over at the mechanic shop, and when something breaks down on one of the other 14s, we're basically taking parts off of it, sticking it on there. I mean, it's, it's you know, we're doing what we can to keep those running. Yeah. They've, they've done great, but at, at 10 years old now, and the mileage and wear and tear they've got on them, they, they've run their life cycle. So the the seven year, 70,000 miles seems to be a pretty good standard. You know, I, I can't say that I've necessarily tracked it to see at what point it just falls off and yeah. you know, where we start spending that money. Um, I have noticed that 70,000 mile market is a good resale on the lower mile. That's a good point. Especially in today's market for used vehicles. <laughs> okay. well, this is helpful. So, I guess it's for those those two. I'll call them tanks that are sitting on the EOC. Are they on this list? Or are they? They. The, so you talking about the Humvees? Well, I, yeah, the yeah. big ones that were in the back there that you have got a deal on. They, or they're Chris's. I can tell he's smiling. Are they, who's are they? I don't know who's <laughs> they're, they're not in the budget. Okay, so they're not on this list. Are they? They're not they, in they the budget been, at all. Yeah, they're not in the budget. They have not been updated on the list at all yet. Um, so those are those are from the Law Enforcement Support Services Program. Okay. And mm -hmm. what they are, they're military vehicles that you apply through the law enforcement support services, go through, it comes with specific requirements and all that stuff. Um, but then we can use them during storm response, hurricanes, things like that, high water flood events. Right. So that if you have that, you've got much more ground clearance. They're designed to do a lot of things that our pickup trucks are not necessarily. We didn't have them when we lost that other truck. We, we did not have them then, no sir. Okay. And they run. I mean, they're they they do run. Yeah. We we just picked those up this year. Now they do have some things that have to be done to come into compliance with the rules and regulations of that, um, and that was not included in this budget. We we're working on trying to figure out exactly how to go about doing that for the next budget cycle. So, so do you consider those public works or police or both or they're by law they're required to be police vehicles. Okay. Yes. But if public works needs to go to the sewer station and three foot deep water, nope, can't do it. They okay. they can't operate those vehicles. Could could, 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 we, could we could we assist him in getting down there? Absolutely, yes. Okay. okay. But yes, there's no places other these other trucks won't get to, right? Correct, correct. Yeah. Yes. But part of that with the law enforcement support services with the military agreements that we have to sign is that they are only under any circumstances to be used for law enforcement purposes. Um, they they even go so far as some agencies have tried to put them in parades and show them off and they're like, this is not what this is for. This is to support your operations. So you're not even supposed to drive them in parades. Uh, so so it, they have a lot of details and rules with it. And there was essentially no cost with that, right? There's, no, it's it, kind of stuff that the military would surplus out otherwise. Correct. The, the only cost is they require you to maintain the equipment. And when you get done with it, you call them up and say, hey, we've done what we needed to do with the equipment. We appreciate the support, and we return it to them. Nice. So, um, that's, that's one of the other rules is that we can't sell it. It's, it's not ours done. You know, we're, we're basically borrowing it from them. It's, it's how that works. Nice. Okay. Well, if it, if it saves us from trash in a truck, they pay for themselves. Yes, a absolutely. Well, and that was, that was our Well, they pay for themselves. They didn't cost anything. <laughs> right. They pay for their maintenance. Yes. Well, yes. Right, just let's, let's qualify that. Yeah. There's probably, I don't know where Frank 
is with his count is probably fifteen thousand dollars of stuff that we need to do to it. Maybe up to twenty now, where he may have cut it down. But there are some things that have to be done to, shall we say, civilianize the. Um, the and if vehicle. I could qualify what town manager is saying, um, to do it carte blanche, all the bells and whistles and everything, it'd be close to fifty grand to make them operations combined for both vehicles. Got it down to 30, so 15 each. And and what's we, we got to demilitarize, demilitarize the appearance for our own optics on the island as a you know family beach number one. Stop Black's, the intimidation factor. <laughs> right, blacks not. We, we want it to. We want it to to say we're here to help, not we're here to get you. We're not. You know we're not going to use it to kick your door in. Is the point. Yeah, so, no martial law, right? Right. <laughs> so they need to be painted. They need some some graphics to to identify them properly on them, and they need some communications and lighting. Um, I have two light bars that came off of other equipment, so there's five thousand dollars there we don't have to spend. Um, part of the radio system that um two of the upgrade radios that Chief mentioned are waterproof models because they were cheaper when we bought them six years ago. The, the plan is to move those to these two Humvees and then put the newest, biggest, best things, you know, the newer radios in the newer vehicles that are daily use. Right. Um, there, there's a little bit of mechanical, but um, just, just to give the example, you know, we're trying to make, make this stuff go as far as we can. Um, and we actually have a citizen, I won't name him in a public meeting, who has um, used to build custom vehicles from the ground up and, and has offered to assist us in painting the um, vehicle. And we have another local citizen in Brunswick County who's offered to paint them. So I'm really close to just buying materials at this point to paint both of them. And we've been trying to do some of that, you know, to, to offset some of the cost too, because that's easily six thousand a piece to paint it for painting graphics. So, and you'll you'll see a breakdown of that coming at at some point from Chief or Town Manager. That's certainly a fluid number as well. So you're not ready to put those vehicles in service yet. You need to get this stuff done, right? I'm, I'm trying to have everything done. My target date was August 1st. Okay. So, okay. It, and it took three years to find those configured that way, by the way. All right, well, I just didn't want them to sit because it, you know, it's an emergency asset as I understand. So if you need them, you need them. So before the next hurricane season is basically your door? It needs to be before August. It <laughs> could have a July hurricane, yeah. Okay. I didn't have anything else on this. I'm good. <clears throat> on to the CIP? David, who's got the CIP? Well, uh, however y'all would like to go through it, I'd uh, propose that perhaps you just start at the CIP expenses and basically um, it looks like to me that we're organized by department um, anyway and since we have the department heads here uh, to to chime in and, and give specifics on it. Um, Do you want to skip the revenue and go to well, the Well, because what will happen is you'll, you'll refer back to the revenue, okay. and the, the expenses are pretty much project-based. Yeah. yeah, but I guess my only thought or comment on the revenue is when we have grants in here, which I think we saw some, they're 
specific to an expense. You know, you can't spend that money on anything. Right. And so it's not like you right. could take that revenue bucket and use it to pay for the expense. They've got to. Right. Okay. So that just is not in this. It's tracked separately that to make sure that, you know, if this revenue only goes to this expense. Is that or how, how are yes. we? Yes. Okay. David, under the fiscal year where it says 23, 24, is that a budgeted number? That's, that's not a year that, to date number, right? That's a beginning year budget number. And okay. there's probably going to be some anomalies between that and what's actually in the budget. Okay. Um, for the direct appropriations, Fed and state, um, that's the second line there. Is that um, going to be for like stormwater? That was the $100,000 for the participant. The partner core. PPA. The core Partners thing. And then agreement. I see stormwater. And then the next year might be a grant for stormwater, right? I'm yes, sir. Okay. Um, Projects. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. There's a, a stormwater fund balance appropriation. I was just curious where did that come from? Did it come from B parts, general? General fund. Okay. Well, let me see. But, um, and I know y'all want y'all started on revenues there, but I still suggest that you start with your expenses, then you can refer back to because the expenses are project based, and the revenues may or may not be project based. But we'll, we'll do right. it however you want okay. to. Okay. So if we look at the expenses, this is all the streets that mm -hmm. we were talking about when Chris was in here, and uh -huh. every year you, you have it prioritized, so that's pretty self-explanatory. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, the, the thing to note there, I, I think that the high point out of that is, not, not the high point street, but the high point is that, you know, what's in here are four years worth of streets expenses and when we started on it we had a 10-year glide slope on our plan um so we're the need to update that streets assessment you can see that hey we, we finished six of them before we need to update that plan yes yeah, so there should be something in yeah. 27 the, 28 the the order the order of merit will, yeah. will stay the same as the values are just going to change okay, okay. All right, so I hate jumping the expense back to revenue, but aren't these Powell Bill things? The streets? Um, the town receives Revin Powell Bill revenues for maintenance of its streets. But not for these expense this, items? The, it could be used for it but it's not specifically detailed in the capital plan that is used for streets paving there's streets no power bill that shows up in revenues not in the capital plan okay it's it's forty thousand dollars a year is the pal bill revenue okay it's probably buried in that line one general fund operating revenues well, yeah well, that's, that yes. says you're paying it out of the current budget numbers, right? Is that that's my interpretation of that operating revenues? We're paying it out of the general fund. Well, well, yeah, I, I just, my understanding is this shows us in the expense where we're going to be spending the money and then up in the revenues where we're getting the money to spend. And if we're going to use Powell Bill to pay for these, then it seems like we should have a revenue associated with these expenses. If we're not going to use Powell Bill, I mean, that's kind of how I read it right now is there's no Powell Bill in here. So we're just paying all these out of the general fund well we didn't we didn't detail at that level we didn't we didn't detail it at that level 
So you're still looking for where's the federal bill? Well, I, I, I mean, is it in the general fund? The, yeah, it's on that, that, uh, that revenue sheet. Yeah. Oh, this new thing that he handed out? Yeah. Okay. It's uh, <clears> 0343 pal bill. It's down in the last 20% of the revenue page. But if I understand, if I understand, David, the pal bill comes in as general fund revenue, and then some portion of that's wrapped up in the operating revenues under CIP. Yes, sir. Whatever fraction that is, if Chris isn't using it for a maintenance thing. Right. So just to clarify what you just said, so you're, it's in the general fund, the very first line, in the revenue. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. And then there's another, just a nit, but the stormwater uh, FB appropriation that didn't bring over to the total revenue, so that it got dropped somewhere. So, you know, the second column from the right. So I don't think. I'm not following you, Tom. Um, under the fiscal year 23-24 storm. Stormwater FB appropriation is a $200,000 number. Right. So if you trash that over to the right, it's not showing up in the totals. It didn't get included in the totals. Ah, okay. But I, okay, so let's make sure I'm understanding. My sense on this is these are big ticket items, capital items, and we're showing when they're going to hit, which year, and we're showing in the revenue where the money's coming from to pay for them. That was the intent. Okay. Because there's not, I mean, is there a process to put something on here and not put something? Because it seemed like there were some things missing. Um, fire station's not in there. Oh, I guarantee, I, I guarantee you there's probably a lot of stuff missing. Because okay. you, have to, you have to understand that the, the capital plan did not exist until probably uh three four five years ago when we first first did it and i mean it's a it's a a moving breathing kind of thing so it it is not a perfect you know picture of, of every of all the needs i mean i'm sure there's other things as as you know the first thing that jumps off the page is that i've got one two three four five five years and the capital plan needs to be 10 years for many of the grants that we're seeing now they want a 10-year capital plan yeah, so yeah. it's would, it's less than perfect yeah i mean That's 10 or 15 because and to me another big one is just beach nourishment i mean are we going to need to shell out you know 10 million dollars sometime in the next 15 years if so it'd be nice to have it on the radar that we see it's out there um, I don't, I don't know if you're going to want to put that on there until you get to the end of your CSDR study, because that could change things. I got you. Your, the beach is designed for 15 years for the way it's put out now. Um, so if we were doing a 10-year plan, it wouldn't show up on there anyway. And then if you're going to go with a core project, once you find out that feasibility study, that would determine if you're placing it on there with your construction cost. So I think you may want to wait till you get to the end of your core study in 26 to find a placeholder in your CIP for that. Okay. I got you. I understand what you're saying. I guess I'm, I'm just... You know, we've got the debt service, which we passed out earlier, which, you know, looks like there's a light at the end of the tunnel four years from now when we pay off some stuff and we don't have big debt service. It, it'd just be nice to counter that with, yeah, but we've got some big ticket items that we're kind of placeholdering out there at the same time so that we can, you know, manage these 
big expenses against our debt payoff and get an accurate longer term picture as accurate as we can get it ballpark whatever you want to call it but um, to not put them out there they're just they're not it's like they don't exist but they but they do Okay, so do we want to go back to expenses, or and then come back to the revenue at the end? We can, yeah. Like but I, I mean, I would, is there a plan to get to like a fifteen-year instead of five-year, or is that on the wish list? Or I, I, I think that fifteen years is is too far out. That it's uh, that ten years is uh, is right. where we should be where we should be limiting our planning horizon to. Okay. Sounds like we have to do 10 as a minimum, David, correct? Well, for many, many of the grants, they want a 10-year yeah. CIP. Now, I mean, you guys know this better than I do. The, the further out you go, the more... The more margin, margin of error. The swaggy, <laughs> yeah. the more swaggy it gets. Um, yeah. You know, we're, we're going to go from... Semi wild guesses to really far out guesses. I, I totally understand, but you know, and I'll just go back to Beach Nur You know, that's a huge ticket item that I think we realize at some point we're going to have to have. And yeah, we've got a big range on it, but to not include it or not even put it on here, I think, um, isn't. So, so I'll counter a question of that then because we need to come to an agreement before we bring it back. Knowing that it's designed for 15, do you want to put it at a 10-year period so it's on a plan? If that's the, the plan is for 10 years, I'm not sure what the plan is right now. When, when do we think our next big nourishment, whether it's the core or we have to pay it out of pocket or, you know, ideally it's FEMA, FEMA. but... I, well, I was going to say, I can't answer that because it depends on if we're hit by a storm or not. But the beach, as it was built in 22, is designed for 15 years okay. with background erosion. So technically, if we're saying we're not doing a 15-year plan, it wouldn't be on the plan. If you're saying you want to see it on a plan somewhere, I'm asking, do you want it on year 10? Because otherwise, I just don't want us to mislead. So you're saying 15 years is when we'll need to do something again? By it depends on by design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Design. Right, right, right. Okay, but still, for 15 years, you should be saving up for that, right? In theory. In some capacity. Right, so and that's why wouldn't we put the 10 years of saving? Understand that you know you would have actually 15 years. So. But like, let's say it's a million. Say it's going to be 15 million in 15 years. So then, for 10 years, if we're only going to do 10, we would see a million dollars a year. Does that make sense? Am I, no, that's that's. Am I, now, whether it's in the SIP or it's some other thing that we have, but I just think you know, it's if very you don't important. want to get to fifteen, well, okay, so you do ten, and then in, then you have five years to figure it out because in five more years you're going to have a huge expense potentially. I think to answer your, to answer the question that you asked, would we want it to show at the 10-year mark, at least as a placekeeper? You guys jump in if this isn't it. We would want it to just show so when you look at the capital improvement program, you see that it's there and somewhere down the road it's, it's a thing to be considered. I think is, what I just heard Tracy say is that she wants that some amount shown as a savings per year. Yeah, for the first oh, 10 years. I got you, okay. Yeah, so it should be in there for the first for a 10 year plan. You look skeptical, Christy. I'm just, I'm just curious. Like, Because I have no idea what the cost of dredging is going to be in 10 years. <laughs> exactly, right. But we know it's not going to be zero. And I, which yeah. Is what we'll have in our bank account in 10 years if we don't start saving. And also, it's going to be different depending on if it's the way it's approached in percentages if it's a core project versus if it's, versus if it's an independent project. But we'll, we'll take a shot at putting something yeah. down on the CIP to 
have for review. Thank Your you. best bad guess, I guess, is what we're looking for, because that's where we end up. I mean, it's not and do we have any idea what FEMA or the Corps would pay for any of that? I can't guarantee FEMA will pay anything, because there's such a thing now as repetitive losses, and they've replaced our beach. So that has been raised at the state level, and I can make no insurance guarantees to you that FEMA will pay if we have any losses again. What about we the, would apply. What about the core? We have to get to a point that we finish our study, and we dis they decide based on the study if it's both economically and environmentally feasible to become a federal project. Isn't there a 25% cost share uh, minimum with the core? Don't we have a cost share with the core program? There's a cost share, but I don't think it starts out at 25%. I didn't bring yeah. those percentages in today yeah. because that's not on our capital improvement plan and gotcha. not what I was planning yeah, to answer. I, not a problem. I just It says it, if we end up in the core program, we need to maybe think about what that might be. <laughs> All right. Let me see. Quick question on Greensboro Street that's under water and sewer or uh, lift station two. I just see that we have 23, 24 budgeted at 4 million. Don't we need to be planning on 4.7? Isn't, isn't that what our current budget number is for that? Not after the grants. Well, that would, that's okay. where the grants would need to show up in revenue, right? That we're planning those revenues. Is that how it would play out? I don't think so. Yeah. I, would, I don't know. I would just say the difference would show up here in our expenses. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, I have a lot of that little thing compared to prices. Where David was talking about the 10 year plan, that's already green engineering's contract for the rest of it now. Sure. Yeah. So in other words, Chris, no way to look at this list as gospel and don't try to nitpick the numbers. Yeah, I mean, but it looks like you do have some real stuff in here, like the truck lease is going away after two years, so that's, yeah. you know, kind of a, you can see some light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. on some of these things that have already, you know. And I'll give you another example here, the um, station, um, Jim said the place for $75,000, um, I can probably just those numbers, or empty just those numbers, and get a little more in line with it. I have started to purchase a lot of the right now. Yeah. Well, I mean that one does project out. I mean, it looks 75. It looks like you, you know, ran some inflation or something on it. 75, 76, up to 80. But that basically, that one to me says, you know, one a year going forward or something yeah. like that. Yep. Well, I, I, which is better than not having it on there, which was my, you know, question was, it's better to have a, a swag than nothing if, if you know it's something that's going to have to... Be, yeah, well, that number, that
Yeah. That's crazy. And how long do they last? Uh, you can get four or five years out of it. Just really, at the end of the morning, you've got to be playing blocks and clean them up every couple of months. I'd say four or five years, five tops. Okay. It just rusts down. It doesn't yeah. wear out, and right? Regardless, regardless, you get one of the candidates, one of the candidates inside the candidate are still metal, so then you end up paying for out for us to go above them, red jaggers, just, you know. Yeah. So a lot of them with closure don't really do you any good, but you still got salt layer inside. It may help some of them while it's inside of it, but it's just not a, a big salt just because you got a lot of them inside it. The uh, gym said it's going to last forever. So they can... Covering it, is that an option? Does that help anything? I don't. I, I'm talking about that covering, but the deal is if you've got it in the field to seal it up, then you've got to have some things of ventilation where it's all right. used and you've got to go crazy here in the field because, you know, right. I'm, I'm talking about outside, just put. But I have to talk about, you know, toy <laughs> around and maybe about to figure out something like if you're running under the wall, maybe you could block some of that south wind off. And I haven't actually drunk and looked at it yet, but Bronson Candy, I talked to the guy there a few weeks ago, and he told me they had one. I know it's that's not a simple somebody thinking, you know, I just just put it in the building, you know, and fire it up later in. Right. But I just remember I, I was buying a, a, a gas a, a barbecue grill like every year until I bought a cover and the yeah. cover really made a difference. So I don't know if it yeah, applies there or not. Yeah. You got an emergency, you need to run right in. Yeah. Yeah. No, I hear you. I just, you got to you got to say you got to say CRS, man. You pull the cover off before you start it up, I'm sure. Well, by rule, you don't get to start. Put it in the facility, put it in the stock automatic. That's right. You can't be in the building and stop automatically in order to meet the requirements of the NEC for a critical facility. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And that's just that's, the playground camp, or is that a more? No, 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 no. That's, okay, so in the comprehensive plan that McGill did for all the parks, okay. they outline different parks at the back. And in their capital plan, the numbers that were categorized for that fiscal year corresponds to what's in your capital plan. It could be at any park. It may not be playground equipment. That's a catch-all title that's playground equipment and parks facilities. So the answer is go look at the master plan. Yes. This is the this is a capital cost to implement the Mac <laughs> capital cost to implement the master plan. That's what this yes. Is, except for like Sailfish Park has been carved out on this. Correct. It was carved out because if there's a project that you potentially identify, which Sailfish was last year, as something you may seek a grant for, most of the grant applications that work on point systems give you points if you identify it in your capital plan. You lose points if you do not. So to get maximum points, if we know something may be potentially, we include it by name. It has to be by name. Good. Gotcha. So can I ask about Block Q? So the next year, the 500000 that's actually for Phase 2, the restrooms, and that's the, for the grant? That's the one you're getting the grant for? The 300000 was for the paving, and the 500 is for the bathroom. Correct, but you guys will likely be entertaining that grant contract prior to the end of this fiscal year, like probably by next month. Okay. And when you entertain the grant contract, you have to add it to the budget if you're going to sign it in the contract. So it would actually move forward and be recognized in this fiscal year, but not executed. There's no way we're building a bathroom out there. We all know that. Yeah. And, and two lines above that, there's another public restroom. Where's that one? Another 200 and 500? Um... The 200000 for this year was the two you're adding at 114 OBE and Avenue E. And what was the 500 Outlook for? 500 Outlook, I am going to have to get you an answer back on that. Okay. <coughs> so we're... Okay, so we've got ADA things kind of scattered in here, right? We don't have a separate capital project to take care of all the ADA stuff. So, is that accurate? That's accurate. Okay. Which it should be just part of our standard operating procedure, actually. Except Say that again. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I said, which it should just be part of our standard operating procedure, except for the stuff related to the... Um, you know, litigation well, thing. But I'm going. It should just be part of our normal stuff. Yeah, I was talking about things. the. Yeah, I was yeah, talking I about mean, the negotiation. It's just embedded yeah, and invisible. Exactly, what we exactly. do. Yeah. But w where would we see the litigation stuff? You talk about the mediation agreement. Yeah, the eleven yeah. projects in the mediation. That's what I was talking about. They're in here. Oh, they're that's, still in that's, here too. That's two of them right there. It's embedded. Got it. <laughs> your, your, some, some of it is like if you look like 217 walkways. is really higher this fiscal year than the others because of walkways yeah. and 55 is not going to be enough in the outlook that was projected before because we're seeing that just one walkway repair is running about $40,000 and we usually try to do at least two a year and we have several that are not they're, they're they need repairing. They are coming about faster than needing to do two. Okay. So you're planning 55 was one or two going forward. I'm sorry. We predicated the budget each year to this point on one complete rebuild and one repair, but they are getting more usage and coming about faster than that from what we see. We have several next year that we're going to need to address, so that line next year is going to be high again. Yeah, because we... Plus, they cost more. They cost right. more. I mean, they we, cost uh, like double what they used to. Yeah, I mean, we've got... How many walkways do we have? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Okay. So one a year, each one has to last twenty-two years. <laughs> Ain't happening. He said two a year. Yeah. Two. Eleven. Well, that, that's, that, that's, one, not, that's not fifty-five. The fifty-five was one, is what I thought. No, she said it was one new and one, one new repair. repair. So two a year, so they have to last twelve years. Okay. But they're not. 
less than 12 years is what she's saying. Yeah, she's going to well, be wanting to do more than two. Yeah, so. Oh, well. I was uh, I was just going to say. It sounds like you got a new uh, duties as assigned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chris O'Pole. You can probably repurpose from from somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I have one last question on the CFP. I promise. <laughs> well, no, I don't promise. <laughs> I really don't promise. The discussion is stimulating. I'm liable to come up with all kinds of stuff. Um, just on the canal dredging, we always show it's like the account, the, the fund balances for the neighborhoods as an expense. Is that just kind of an accounting thing to make it balance and then? Yeah, because it's not actually going to be expense. Yeah, it's just has to, it has to equal out, right? Okay. All but right. what that does for you, you got a shovel ready project. Yep. I got you. So if something, right. You got I'm a with shovel you. ready yep. project. Okay. That's the same question, I guess, because right now it shows it all happening <laughs> this year and then nothing. I mean, how often are we dredging the canal? Well, yeah. we, we have it on a seven to ten year cycle, but there could be hot spots like this year, and actually it could be every year. Because if you have a storm come in, you you stand shovel ready. So we show it in the current year in case you're hit by a storm and you have to take action. Right, right. But but we don't. We only show this year. We don't show anything. Well, it, it'll roll forward every year. It'll, all the yeah. increase as the reserve increases. The actual schedule will be in the dredge master plan, correct? It's I think when we did the last one and we get periodic surveys that update it. And it's, um, on, it's on seven years, I believe. I think sounds about right. That number yeah, correct. Well, yeah, I, I, I'm, but then it shows you your revenue because you're making interest on uh, when you look at your revenue. Yeah. yeah. Based on what I know from the, the the dredging program, we're in pretty good shape. You're in very good shape. Are we spending uh, that the three point three million this year? No. No, no. no. It's okay. it's there. If we had a catastrophe and we had to dredge, it would be right there to go. But it's kinda like it gets appropriated, we don't spend it, it gets swept back into that. Um, Rolls cap forward to the next. I pretty uh, much right. just ignore that whole thing. Well, I, yeah, I mean self sustaining, right? I mean because and then we get grants on top of it if we do have to spend a little money. Right, and the, and the revenue for that comes from the canal owners. And every year they look at what it should be and they tell the town what they would like it to be. And then that's the way it normally goes. The only thing I get concerned about there is where we're going to put the spoils and how that will affect the cost. But well, part of the contract that she negotiated. Um, for that one thing, but if we do a, a complete canal dredge, we got to find a home for that stuff. And trucking could be more expensive, but I think the canal owners recognize if it becomes a huge expense, they just may get hit with special assessment. So, um, but that, that answered my accounting question. That plus uh, our advocacy efforts um, based on the um, hill visit last year that Mayor Holden and Town Manager Hewitt had, Senator Budd is taking that up as one of his major issues as a junior legislator. And he's uh, actually drafting language to send to the core as far as a letter. And hopefully we can have top down change in policy where dredge, dredge spoil disposal happens. Good. No, I, I, sorry if I'm beating this to death, but I mean, it sounds to me 
kind of like beach nourishment, except that this is actually funded, where we've got this money, we might need it this year, oh, we don't, maybe we need it next year, nope, we don't, you know. Mm -hmm. it, right. I mean, I'd love to have 10 million bucks sitting in the beach nourishment, and well, we don't need to nourish this year, but we got it in case we need it next year or next year. So, not sure the best way to show that in a capital plan, but that's how I'm viewing it is we know at some point we're going to need to spend a lot of money to dredge a canal or nourish the beach. We don't know which year it's going to fall in, but we've got it planned for in here somewhere. No. I don't have. Agreed. Okay. I think. I'm good. I mean, I would very much like to go to 10 year or 15 year. I don't know what, how much work when we can get there, but it'd be great to have a 10 to 15 year. Recognizing that 15 years out is kind of a fuzzy number with a big margin of error, but at least we put a placeholder out there so we're not pretending it doesn't exist. It sounds like, David, we, you could do 10 years. You're, you're, uh, you think that's reasonable? Yes. Going forward? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Let's start with 10. We're going from 5 to 10. As, so as, as, as a matter of fact, our original CIP was 10 years, and the board <laughs> wanted it truncated somewhat. So we cut it back five years. I believe that's what happened. Okay. But it needs to be at least 10 years so that we can do the call outs for the grants. Good. Anybody got anything else? Motion to adjourn? Oh. Oh, oh, Wait a minute. Yes, ma'am. Am I good, Mayor Holden? Yes, ma'am. You have the floor. So, um, you, we owed you an answer back on your third possible earmark in fire departments. Okay. Uh, for this meeting. So, uh, Warden Smith actually went above and beyond and wrote like a four-page letter back to David and I based on our question, but it narrows down to basically three things. As best they can tell, you're not eligible through USDA because you don't meet minimum distress for our neighborhood's not distressed. The Holden Beach is not a distressed community. Um, with HUD, you could compete, but because we're not low to moderate income, we'll likely not be competitive. And you could compete under a FEMA Emergency Operations Center if you were building an EOC and a fire department together, but you would only be eligible to fund the part that was the EOC, and we already have an EOC, so that doesn't seem to fit. Um, they are not saying that it might not come out in a new fund for fiscal year 25, which hadn't been released for what those would be yet, but it is unlikely. And also, uh, as far as the legislators go, they have not been keen on pushing fire departments. Only one's been pushed forward in the last three years. So we need to come up with a new one. <laughs> well, a new, they're not ready yet. Yeah, I can't be okay. is, that, is that right? I mean, give up on that one. Is there a motion on the floor? I want to come. There was a motion to adjourn, yes, sir. Have a second. Okay. Trying to abide by my directions to be proper in parliamentary procedure. I now recognize your motion, and I'll recognize the second, but until they recognize, they don't count. So now they are official on the table, and... All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no.